Um, today, we are going to cover door knocking. Now, this is something that throughout my entire career, I've actually tried to get away from, and I haven't been able to because it's such a lucrative part of my business. So there's a couple of things to think about when you are door knocking. The first is, yes, we're looking for immediate business. Yes, we're looking for opportunities right now. But we're also looking to add people to our database to create relationships with other people. So one of the key things we want to do here is find ways to get as much information as we can as far as phone numbers, names, um, addresses if you're if you're knocking homes or condos or townhomes, and then email addresses so that we can stay in touch with them and begin to communicate with them on a consistent basis and create a relationship so that they have a real estate agent in their life when they need one. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just listed, you just listed a property, you're inviting people to the open house. This is a tremendous opportunity to add people to your database. We'll talk at another time about what to do and how to create an amazing open house and the different steps. It takes a week uh, sometimes to, to really create the energy in an open house that you need. But today we're specifically going to be talking about knocking the neighborhood or knocking around the area. So one of the first things that you want to do is when you knock on doors, you want to make sure that you're dressed the part. You want to make sure that you've got your name badge and that you are um, dressed professionally. Um, oftentimes, you know, especially in today's world, people are nervous. And so you got to make sure that when you go out, you look like a real estate you look like somebody that they're okay to have a conversation with. Whenever somebody calls, whenever somebody um, shows up, they want to know who you are and why you're there. So a quick introduction is always the most appropriate thing. When you knock a door, you definitely want to take a couple of steps back and give themselves some space between you and the front door. You don't want to be right up close. That can be super intimidating for people. Okay. Hey, my name is Rod. I'm with Next Home Navigator. The I've been working with, and this is something really important as well. You want to make sure that you use the family's name, last name. Um, I've been working with the Landons over at 123 Maple Street. They've hired me to market and sell their property. And they've asked me to ensure that I invite everybody in the neighborhood, because oftentimes we know that the buyer for a home is somebody that already knows somebody, is a family member of somebody that lives nearby. So they've asked me to come out and have a quick conversation with you and make sure that you guys know you're invited. They would love to have you guys come out, take a look at their home. And if you do happen to know of anybody that might be considering moving to the area, that maybe you could pass that along. I have two questions. First, who do you know that might be a great fit for the neighborhood? Do you guys know anybody that's considering making a move that you'd love to have as a neighbor? Now, it's you want to make sure that you're specifically going to the neighbor for this specific house at the beginning, right? So you want to come in and you want to go, hey, who do you know that's considering moving into this neighborhood? Or who do you know that might be a really good fit? Thank you for taking the time to think about it. Would it be okay? Now, um, in the script book, Melody's got, here's a card. If you run into somebody, would you please have them reach out? It's not really a card. What we typically hand out is just a simple flyer. Um, would you make sure that this gets in the right hands of anybody and definitely know that you're invited as well? You don't want to hand them a business card because that's going to keep them from giving you the information. The second thing, the second question that we have is we've got a little bit of a challenge. We're getting a ton of pre-market interest in the property and unfortunately, I only have one home to sell. Can I ask you really quickly, if we had another family that was super interested in moving into the area and willing to pay a premium, have you guys had any thoughts about possibly making a move? Do you know when, when, when are you guys thinking about making a move? Anything along those lines. So the first thing is, do you know anybody for the home? The second thing is we've got a bit of a challenge. We are getting a lot of pre-market interest in the property. I'm only able to sell this home to one family. Um, if we had somebody that was willing to pay a premium, have you guys had any thoughts about making a move? And do you know anybody else in the neighborhood that might be considering it as well? Divorces, you know, job changes, anything like that. Are you guys aware of anybody in the neighborhood that might be considering sometime in the near future? That's that's basically it. And then, you know, just as a wrap up on this one. This is where I'm trying to gather information. So the next thing I do is I say, hey, 
almost every family that I've talked to in the neighborhood has asked me to do this for them. The, when this property sells, would you like to know what the sales price is? Uh, would it be a benefit to know? Obviously, this will impact the value of your home um, moving forward. Um, everybody else has just said, hey, just shoot me an email when you have the final number. Would you guys like me to add you to that list? And then you just take out your, palm, your, your pen. Don't ask permission. Look down and wait. Most of the time, they're just going to give you an email address, right? Um, sometimes they may resist it a little bit. Um, if they don't, if they're, if they're resisting a little bit, no problem. You guys is totally okay. I don't want to be, you know, would you prefer it in a text? And then you can maybe jot down their phone number. If they don't, you know, again, make sure they know that they're invited to the open house and you politely leave. That's it. That's the just listed open house script. Now, um, and again, we'll cover this at a future date, but one thing I want you to think about if they show up to the house, they're moving. They're probably moving within the next six months to a year. So when you see a neighbor at an open house that you've had a conversation with, guys, those are the people you need to be spending time with and paying attention to and making sure that they're feeling loved and appreciated. All right. The next one that we're going to talk about is targeting condos and townhomes. Now, this is one of the most lucrative um, time, you know, dollar, dollar per minute activities, dollar per time activities that you can possibly do. And the reason why is in our community, we know that on average, homeowners move about every nine to 10 years. Townhome and condo owners move every three to five years. So every time you have a conversation with somebody at a condo or a townhome, there's a at least a 33% chance that the person you're talking to is going to be moving this year. Um, there's almost a 100% chance that the person you're talking to is going to be moving sometime in the next three years. So when you're approaching these guys, hey, my name is Rod, I'm a local realtor, and we've been talking to a lot of the families in the complex, and a lot of them have expressed a desire to make a change with their housing. Great complex, but they're saying, hey, um, I'd love to get into something a little bit bigger. I'd love to get a yard for my dog. I'd love to feel a little bit more safe with my kids going outside. Let me ask you this. If there was one thing that you could change about your current home, whether it's moving closer to work, eliminating the stairs, getting a bigger backyard, getting away from the, the proximity of the neighbors, if there was anything you could change, what do you think would be the most important thing for you to change right away? And when you ask that, in most cases, they're going to give you one of those things. Guys, that is their motivation. Well, let me ask you this. If I could get you the right price for your condo or townhome today, if I could get you the right price for your home today, and I could help you find the home with the bigger backyard, whatever it was that they said, without as many stairs, with a little bit more space between the neighbors, if I could get you the right price for your home today and help you find the home you're dreaming about instead of the one that you're settling for in a perfect world, how soon would you like to wake up in your new home? Well, guys, one of the things that I do for my VIP clients every single year with no cost, no obligation, is I give them an updated, accurate valuation of their home. It takes me a few minutes to do, but I would be more than happy to share that information with you just so you know what your home's value is today, just so you have all the information so that you can make the best decision for you and your family moving forward. Now, you always want to set the appointment when they say, yes, um, I'd be interested. Look, I'm going to be back out here for whatever reason. I'm going to be back out here because the, the Johnson family, um, two buildings over, have asked me to do the same thing for them. So I'm going to be dropping that off. I can come by. It'll take about 10 minutes. I can drop by and share that information with you. Would that be valuable if I just dropped it by? Sure. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what you're doing. Again, guys, um, you know, hey, you can dig in a little bit further if you're comfortable. Can you tell me a little bit more? Have you guys done any upgrades to your home? Um, you know, is there anything that's different about yours, unique about yours? Did you finish the basement? Whatever it is, gather as much information from them. And then in case something comes up and I've got any questions, what's the best phone number for you? And you'll notice on the tonality, it's it's a downswing in your tone. Um, in case I run into challenge or have any questions when I'm doing the research, what's the best number for you? 
and forgive me, help me with your name really quick. And you just jot that information down. You're, you're seeking information, you're building relationships. Sometimes they're not quite ready. Most of the time when you're door knocking, this is future business, right? The right now business is expires for sell by owners, sphere of influence. But door knocking is adding people to your sphere and finding business in the future. All right, um, let's cover renters really quick and uh, and maybe a couple of, of one-liners that help as well. So when you're knocking rentals, I want you to think about this. Almost 100% of the people that you talk to don't want to be in a rental. They would rather own a home than they'd rather pay their own mortgage rather than somebody else's. You've got to be energetic. You've got to be somebody that's fun at the door. If you're not, they're not going to spend much time with you, right? But most of these people are not getting knocked very often. There's a, there's pro, you know, a lot of the complexes don't want people knocking doors. Um, so this is something that when you talk to these people, they're flattered that you're there. You have something that they all want. So come in with a little bit of energy, be in the right, be in the right mind space for this specific door knocking. All right. Again, whenever you knock on a door, they want to know who you are and why you're there. So, hi, my name is, step back. Hey, my name is Rod. I'm a local real estate agent. Have you got a quick second? Now, a um, couple of other things to uh, to know. I never leave anything at the door at an apartment complex because if you do, you're going to get kicked out really quickly because somebody's going to come home. They're going to get mad. They're going to call the office. The office is going to come. They're going to kick you out. So don't leave anything at the door, but you can have something with you that, you know, maybe it's a QR code to the website or something, but you only give that out when you're talking to somebody. Hey, the reason that I'm here today is I've been talking to a lot of the families in your complex and almost every one of them said they would rather own their own home than rent. Have you guys had any thoughts of buying? Have you guys had any thoughts of qualifying? Um, most of them are going to say, well, I'm tied up in a lease or I don't think I can qualify or whatever. Guys, you know, most people don't realize that they could qualify for a home because maybe they haven't saved up a big down payment. If we could solve that problem, if you qualify, would you prefer to pay your landlord's mortgage or would you prefer to put the money into your own retirement or into your own savings account? I realized a long time ago that paying somebody else's mortgage was never going to be a win for me. Have you guys figured that out yet? Now, you've got to smile when you say that stuff. You've got to be engaging and, and kind of, you know, hey, I know this is kind of funny, but and and so just use it. Just out of curiosity, when are you guys planning on getting your own home? Well, we're going to school. My husband's in school waiting for a job, whatever it is, they'll tell you. Great. Let me have a lender get you pre-qualified. Would it be OK if I just had my lender reach out to you? just to get you pre-qualified. Now, it's not going to cost any, anything and it's not going to hurt your credit. We do what's called a soft poll. So it's not really an inquiry on your credit. Would you be interested to find out what you might qualify for? A couple of other pieces of information you might want to hunt for here is how much are they paying in rents? You know what's interesting is in our community, in many, many cases, it's actually cheaper to own a home than it is to rent. If you could make the same payment and actually own something as opposed to renting something, would you prefer to put money towards your own retirement or towards your landlords, right? Any of those things. Um, another approach. Hey, my name is Rod. I'm a local realtor. Pleased to meet you. Have you got a quick second? So I've been speaking with a lot of families here in the area. I'm, sh I'm not sure if you know or not, but in Utah, it's more expensive to rent than it is to own. Now, right now, that may or may not be true, but I want to share this with you. Um, it's not true as a dollar for dollar. So if you're paying $2,000 a month in rents, you probably won't be able to get into a home for $2,000. However, when you consider principal reduction, when you consider tax advantages, and when you consider uh, appreciation, a portion of their house payment is going to go towards paying down the mortgage. They're gonna get the, the appreciation that happens typically. Um, they're going to get the principal reduction. So when you take all those things out of their payment, it's always cheaper to own than it is to rent. You're increasing your net worth. Yes, you're going to have to pay a little bit more every month, but a portion of what you're paying every month is going back to you, not to your landlord's benefit. Does that make sense? So that's something that I want you guys to think of. Um, let me gather some information. Now, um, a couple of things here again. You want to gather their phone number. Never give them your information and have them wait to call you. 
you always want to get their information and find a reason to give them a call back. Hey, you know, when rates come down to a certain level, would you guys be interested in finding out of that, about that so that you can get in earlier than everybody else? So you don't have to compete with as many people. Great. Um, what's the best phone number for you? And oftentimes it's easier to catch an email. I promise I won't spam you, but what's the best email for you? And you can gather their information and, and gather their name as well. All right. Um, a couple of little one-liners that are kind of fun just to, just to go through, and I'll go through these. You've heard one of them already. Hey, I learned a long time ago that making somebody else's mortgage payment was never going to be a win for me. Have you figured that out yet? Um, here's another one. Um, are you aware that it's more expensive to rent than it is to own in our state? Now, again, that's you know because of the principal reduction, tax benefits, and appreciation. Next one. You know, one of the things I used to do when I lived in an apartment, and I, I'm pretty sure most of us have been there, I used to walk out in the morning and I'd high five my neighbor. You know why? Because I heard they got laid last night and I didn't. How did I hear? Well, the walls were super thin. You guys had that experience yet, right? And again, it, it, it depends on who you're communicating with. If it's, you know, if it's somebody of the opposite sex, I don't encourage you to use that line. If it's somebody of the same sex, sometimes you can get away with it, but be careful with that one. You know, every time they vacuumed, you know, every time they, you know, whatever it is, you can, you can use those as well. If you could change anything about your current home, um, and, I, and I changed this to, what is the one thing? If you could change anything about your home, what's the one thing that you would change? And then give them a couple of ideas. You know, moving closer to work, getting away from your crazy neighbors, getting a bigger backyard, eliminating the stairs. If there was one thing you could change, what would that be? Um, and when do you plan on putting money towards your own retirement instead of somebody else's? Now, um, guys, a couple of things here. Um, when you're talking to people and you're knocking doors or you're calling your sphere of influence, who do you know? that might be considering making a move is not as effective as who's the one person in your world, whether it's a coworker, a family member, somebody at church, somebody in the neighborhood, who's the one person in your world that might be considering making a move next or might be considering you know, buying or selling real estate next. When you narrow it down to one person that they can think of, it's a lot easier for them than asking them to look at their entire world and pick out of that entire world one person. But when you ask it slightly differently, who's the one person in your world? And then, you know, talk, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's at or family members, whether it's church, whether it's in the neighborhood, who is the one person in your world that's most likely to consider buying or selling next? A lot of, you know, a lot of times it's somebody that's going through a divorce. Sometimes it's somebody that's going through a job change. Who do you know that might be thinking about buying or selling a home next? Well, I've got a niece that's getting married in the next two months. And I'm sure she's probably going to be interested in buying a home. Terrific. Um, those are the kinds of things, guys, that will help you just a little bit different, but that'll help you have a more, excuse me, a more effective day door knocking. We appreciate you guys being here. Hopefully this is valuable information. I would encourage you at one point during the week this week, I know how uncomfortable this is, but we've got beautiful weather. Guys, take a couple of hours Pick one of these, whether it's townhomes or condos, renters, or a just listed, just sold for an open house. Find one of these and go out and knock 25 doors or 50 doors. Have 20 conversations. Find a way to go out and, and start to build this skill set. Use some of these scripts. Use some of what we've talked about. Go put a few more people in your database. All right, guys, we appreciate you. Go have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.